Hi there guys and welcome to today's episode of the Back in Shape podcast. We wanted one that was really going to help you get started in 2023 in the right way, how to get back in shape this year in the most effective way. And, and it's worth bearing in mind, if it's not January, maybe it's coming up to summer or whatever time of year, or maybe it's just that time of life that you're looking to get yourself back in shape, this episode is hopefully going to be really, really helpful for you. As always, there's a comment section underneath this video. If you do have any questions or comments about what we're talking about or other things, then you can always reach out to us in that comment section. We read and reply to all of yours, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're watching on the website as well or one of the other platforms, use that comment section. It's there for us to help you guys further. So there's a few things we wanted to cover today, but I think the first and most important thing that we want to go through is, is are you looking to get back in shape for the long term? Which most of you, the answer is going to be yes. Or is it just for January? Because, or just for this short period of time? Because the actions that we take over the next couple of weeks are really going to dictate whether we're going to get caught out, like we saw so often in clinical practice. And as part of the membership, we see a lot of people joining us towards the back end of January, early part of February, because they've pushed themselves too hard, they've burnt out, their injuries have cropped up, or old injuries have resurfaced, and they get in trouble. We want to make sure that as so often happens, falling off the wagon is not something that besets your path to getting back in shape this time round. So it's super important that we cover some of these things today. And as well as that, at the end of the episode, we're going to have some more practical tips for you, things to consider to really help enhance your success over the coming weeks, months, and hopefully years and decades too. So the first and most important thing, I've already kind of touched on it, is that block. We want to eliminate the block of going too fast, pushing out too hard. This first week, you get back in the gym or you get back into workouts, you're working out way too hard, doing all sorts of exercises, you burn out and you get yourself caught out. That is what we want to avoid because it catches so many people out because you've got loads of motivation. Just remember, just tone it down a little bit. We'll have a little bit more on this later in the episode and then you can ramp things up. That steady graded introduction is so important. Why? Because it could be like right now, we've just had the Christmas period. We've been doing different things. We've been with family. We've been eating lots, maybe a little bit more alcohol than we'd usually take. Our body has been functioning in a different way. Or it could be that it's just some random time of the year and you're looking to get back in shape and you haven't been doing the right sort of things right now. And the motivation up here is at this level, but what your body is capable of down is down here and there's a bit of a mismatch. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important. Just give yourself a little bit of time. Take off the first week nice and easy and get yourself back into it. As long as you follow that first step, you're going to avoid falling at the first hurdle. Now, the next thing, which is equally important, is going to be you've got to follow a plan. Now, I know that there's plenty of people that are looking for exercises on YouTube. You know, we're going to piece together this exercise from there, that workout from there, and kind of put it together for ourselves. But not to not to sound wrong in any way, but if I went into any of your workplaces, your profession, your job, your trade, and you said, hey, Mike, you, you take over and you do what you need to do, I'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I need you because you're the expert. You know what you're doing every day. You tell me what to do. And with exercise, we kind of think that, oh, because I move my body, I could just be able to pick a few exercises and move forwards. And, and it doesn't work like that. It's always better when it comes to starting a process where we actually want to get real results, that you follow a plan that's written by someone who knows what they're doing. Now, we make no bones about it. The program that we have at Back in Shape is to help the everyday person who's got back pain or maybe has a history of back injuries and maybe some other injuries in the lower extremity, knees, hips, etc., and help them get back into a position where they can do the things they love. They can play with the grandkids on the floor. They can go to work. They can take maybe a newborn like we've got and actually play with them and not be struggling with your back every single day or maybe want to go around the golf course again or play with uh, you know play sp some low-level sports with friends, maybe kick around a football, etc., or get just get back into a bit of a more healthy lifestyle. We, that's us. That's who we help. We don't work with elite athletes trying to get them to the top of their game and helping them in that, in that sphere. That's, there's other programs and other people that will help you with that. And we don't want to try and help everybody in that regard. We know where, who we help. And you need to know what kind of person are you. Are you the average person? It's maybe, like many of us, have some injuries in the past. You don't want to flare them up. You just want to be healthy and happy and able to do the things you want to do on a daily basis. And you're not looking for any peak performance. And we'll touch on this a little bit later. If that's you, then follow the sort of programs that we talk about and this video will be particularly relevant for you on a principal level if you are an elite athlete you're looking to set world records in powerlifting or something like that then go and follow someone else because the guidance will be different for you in terms of your specific goals so it's always important to have a goal and understand what you're looking for and then approach the relevant professional that's going to help you 
If you had a leak in your toilet, you wouldn't go to your local gardener to ask them to fix it, you'd go to a plumber. The same thing if you had a light problem, you go to your electrician, you wouldn't go to your accountant. So just fit the right person, the right program, the right professionals to the goal or the task at hand. That's really, really important. But all above all, follow a plan. Don't just pick together exercises and expect to get results because you might well be doing the right exercises, but you're not following the intensity desired. You haven't got the program. So you end up, you started doing, oh, I'll do planks for 30 seconds. And then six months later, you're still doing planks for 30 seconds. There's no improvement there. So you're not going to get results in that way either. So follow a plan that's written by someone who knows what they're doing, that adheres to your specific goals. That is, it's, it's, it's non-negotiable. Now, the next thing goes back to that athlete analogy. Athletes, peak performers, people that are world-class, maybe it's basketball, maybe it's football, maybe it's athletics, whatever it may be, they have different demands. And doing plyometrics, leaping and bounding, agility training, maybe it's jiu-jitsu or something like that, you have different requirements to excel in those sports arenas. But if you are a person that is just looking to be fit and healthy and achieve some of those goals that we mentioned earlier, you know, improve your cardiovascular health, improve your muscular health, because we know that is so important for longevity, then working with exercises like leaps and bounding, impact exercises, squat jumps, I know they feel great, they get a great burn, but they come with unnecessary risk, the risk of impact. Those are higher order skills and we need higher order adaptations to be able to deal with the ballistic loading that takes place when we're doing squat jumps, when we're doing alternating lunge jumps, when we're doing burpees. Although these things get a burn, they aren't going to give you significantly greater results than doing more simplistic variations like a static squat or a static lunge with the appropriate weight ranges of motion and intensity. We don't need to add that impact in there unless we're doing it for sport specific purposes. And if you're someone that's trying to rehabilitate, maybe from a back injury, or you know in the back of your mind your knees aren't as good as they should be, or your hips are a little bit dodgy, there's a bit of arthritis there, then there's no need to incorporate those sorts of exercises into your getting back in shape program. Now, of course, if you're someone who's got an injury coming back into sport, or sorry, coming back from that injury, you can do some simplistic exercises. Maybe later on, you want to go and pursue some sport in a more serious manner, then you might start to incorporate that sort of plyometric type training in the future. And that's fine. But understand what you're looking to do and impact invariably, especially for many of our members, if not the vast majority, if not all of them, you do not need jumping exercises, leaping and bounding exercises, they are not necessary and they only increase the likelihood of you getting back in shape for January only and having an injury in February rather than getting back in shape for the long term. So as we move now, we're going to move into a bit more of a sort of the prescriptive. What should you be doing now? What should our plan be going forwards? Well, the first thing I've already mentioned it. This first week, whether it's whether you're just coming off into 2023 as we're shooting this right now, or you're just looking to get ready for the summer, maybe this year, or sometime in the future, this first week, go in at 70, 75%. Pick that plan that we discussed earlier that you're gonna follow, but go in at about 70, 75%. Get comfortable with the routines, get comfortable with your body, don't push yourself too hard. That is critically important. Then week two, you really wanna look at getting the right sort of level of resistance. Are we using the right weights? Are we doing the right reps? Are we having the right rest between sets? Get that to the point where it's challenging. And typically, if we're doing four or five sets, we might find that the fourth and fifth set, we really struggle to hit our desired rep ranges. And we can play around with things like the rest and things like the weight to fine tune that so it's challenging, it's hard on that week too. And what you'll find is if you stick to that particular setup, those weights that you've chosen, that rest, that time frames, that depth of rep that you've chosen, over the course of the next four weeks, taking you to about week six, you'll find that gradually your body adapts and you improve and all of a sudden that workout starts to become a little bit easier. Now. It's never going to be easy, but it's going to be easier. You will notice that you don't need as much rest. You are more comfortable going through the routine. If you're using a heart rate monitor, like a Fitbit, Apple Watch, Whoops, whatever they are, you'll find that your heart rate isn't quite as elevated as it was in that first week. And those are all cues to then go back to what we just mentioned and up the ante again. Decrease the rest, increase the resistance, whatever it may be, add in an extra set. If, that, if you're in the membership, that might mean moving from three sets to four sets. It might mean moving from phase two to phase three or phase three to phase four. It could be a number of different things, but make that step every four to six weeks, especially as we move on to more of the latter stages of the program, talking about phase four and late phase three and beyond if you're a member of the Back and Shape program. There's much more guidance inside the membership. And if you're one of our premium members, you can always reach out to us in the group or on the weekly lives to get a little bit more tailored advice there. But at a principle level, that will suffice and you won't go too far wrong if you follow that guidance. Now, these final five steps are really important. The first three 
address the thing that's so often overlooked. Some of you will kill yourself in the gym, you'll kill yourself with your workouts, but you forget this. When you do a workout, you are providing the stimulation necessary for change to happen within your body, especially if we're talking about getting stronger, which is important for all of us. Being stronger than we currently are today, every single one of you watching this will be a net benefit to your life, your freedom, the ability to do things you want, and your longevity, bar no one. So always work on getting stronger than you currently are. Small incremental improvements over time are the things that make the most drastic effect and give us that really ingrained longevity rather than quick wins, easy come, easy go, as the saying goes. Now, this first one is food. You don't need to follow 101 different dietary regimens with huge restrictions and this, that, the other. Focus on getting the right amount of calories for your needs and focus on foods that you can name. It's a cabbage, it's a broccoli, it's an egg, it's a piece of steak, some beef, it's milk, it's cheese, not Lucky Charms or ingredients where there's a laundry list. And I know that there's a general rule, the easiest way to look at this is processed foods. Avoid processed foods. And go into the shop, you've got an avocado. We'll touch on that a little bit later on. You've got a banana. Those sorts of foods are going to be helpful. And if you just make sure your diet includes foods that you can name what it is, you'll do well. And we, some of you, from a point of view of the vegan side of things, you might be tempted to go for um, some of the artificial meats, the things like the Beyond Beef Burger and those sorts of things. But look at them. It's a laundry list of ingredients. That is processed. That is a processed food. So be careful for those sorts of things, meat substitutes, because they are processed. You're much better off if you're in the vegan space choosing, again, foods that you can name. Lentils, pulses, nuts, seeds, those are all things where you can name what it is and you'll get the necessary nutrients from there. So very important from a food, don't overcomplicate it. Just get the right amounts of protein, amounts of calories, etc., that you need on a daily basis. Get them from foods where what you're eating is what it is. It doesn't have a list of ingredients behind it. Second thing is hydration. If you're stepping things up a notch right now, then you're going to be working out more, you're going to be drinking more or you should be drinking more, your requirement for fluids is going to be greater. Remember that sweat, we're sweating out the salts. So we want to make sure that some of you might suffer with some cramping because maybe you're drinking a lot more, but you're not taking in enough salt because salt has been demonized. If we are in an athletic endeavor, especially if we're doing more enhanced uh, or more intense exercises, we will need to replace some of those salts. So some of you might want to experiment with adding a little bit of salt to your water, for example, to make sure you're hydrated or go down the route of getting some of the specific hydration sachets, salts or drinks much like we might take a diarolite after having a bout of diarrhea to replace some of those essential salts and minerals. It's the same thing if we're sweating out tons because we're really stepping up the ante and we've stepped up our water intake, we want to make sure we're getting enough salts. And while we're at it, sources like um, bananas and avocados are really good for that potassium. Remember, all of our nerves use potassium and sodium as a way of firing those nerves in a balance and an imbalance between those two. So we want to make sure we're getting those in sufficient quantities as well. So those are some great sources. Standard salt, typically we, we use Himalayan salt or Malden salt, one of those sorts like rather than the refined salts. And then things like avocados and, and bananas can really work well to get that balance. And of course, we've got tons of other minerals and essential little trace minerals that we should get from our foods as well. But if we're following point number one, we're probably gonna be getting all of that anyway. And you can always supplement a little bit. One of the nice supplements that we like adding is magnesium as well. Magnesium glycinate is the one that we personally choose. And you can get these really inexpensively off places like Amazon. The third, is going to be sleep. Commit to a regular sleep schedule. Sleep is when you are recovering. If we are not sleeping correctly, we cannot benefit from the exercises that we are doing. We won't recover or regenerate. We'll end up moving into the realms of overtraining. The sleeping is when our body is healing and repairing and responding to the stimulation from our exercises. So we must make sure that we are getting appropriate sleep. It's no use trying to burn the candle at both ends. You will only end up burning out. And that is a real, real risk if we are not getting sleep right. So commit to sleeping properly. And those first three that you've mentioned, the food, the hydration, and the sleeping, if you're doing those right, as so many people miss out, you're really going to complement the hard work. You don't want to be working out hard in the gym or at home doing your workouts every day, only to be throwing away most of the results by not adhering to fueling your body correctly, to hydrating your body correctly, and to recovering effectively and allow your body to recover and regenerate effectively. The next one is quite important. Know yourself. It's no good jumping back into a new workout regime. You're working to get back in shape. It's the new year. We're gonna crack on. We're gonna work out seven times a day for two hours a day. You're gonna end up by week three hating it. Unless you're a real fitness enthusiast and you will know who you are if that's you, you will end up, the workouts are gonna get in the way of things you wanna do. You're gonna to start to feel exhausted. It's too much. Focus on 
three, four, or five good hard workouts every week. Focus on the previous three steps as well. And that way you've got a schedule that is, a, that is maintainable. Much like the diet, people go too severe, too restrictive on the diet side of things, and it becomes a hate. We don't enjoy doing it. We get sick to the back teeth of doing that, of trying to sort out all our foods, of trying to go to the gym every single day. It becomes a burden rather than an enjoyment. If we're working three to five times a week, and maybe our sessions are 30 to 45 minutes long, we'll find that actually that in a 168 hour week, we're not even doing five hours of working out and that doesn't seem too burdensome. So we can more, or it's more likely that we will be able to continue to maintain that for the long term rather than get to the end of a month and go, do you know what, I've had enough. I got some good results, I'm happy, I'll stop. And then all of a sudden we've got that yo-yo dieter, yo-yo fitness person who's in shape one month and completely out of shape the next. And it's no good for the body that much change. Remember, our body is always trying to keep a state of balance, a state of homeostasis within. And having weight yo-yoing up and down by huge swings is not good for our health and well-being. And it's certainly not gonna be good for our joints as well, particularly the lower body load-bearing joints, the spine, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So bear that in mind too. The final one is really quite important. There's a, I believe it is an African proverb. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. Being part of a community of others that are on the same journey as you, that are having their own highs, their own lows, their own days when they don't feel like doing it, and their own days when they're smashing their personal records and sharing that is so motivating. We can't always be on every single day of the week, every single time it comes to do a session. I'm certainly not, and I'm sure you aren't either. So having a membership or a, a group of people that you uh, that are doing the same sort of things as you, that some are maybe further ahead, some are further behind, will really help motivate you to keep close to that fire and keep making the progress. And we see that with many of the members that come into Back in Shape. Sure, we get some that come in or a lot that come in that, that work, they stay with us and they fix their back pain and then they go off and do the things they love. But we also have that same group of people that come in and they stay and they work together and they make up a really awesome community that we are really proud of in the Back in Shape program. They have people that are just continuing to keep their body. They've got it back in shape, but now they're keeping it in shape and they're doing more and more with each passing month and year as time goes on. So definitely, whether it's with us, but maybe it's with a different community of people that fit your specific goals. Maybe it's those guys that are trying to do that powerlifting I mentioned earlier. Or maybe it's your local jiu-jitsu club. Or maybe it's some other sporting venture. There's things like park run, etc., where people are part of a community. It helps you stick to your goals, stick to your commitments, and ultimately that community will help reinforce you as you go forwards and make sure that you get back in shape and keep back in shape this time round. So that's the end of today's podcast. I do hope it's been helpful. It's not really been about a condition. It's not really been about that sort of stuff or back pain, etc. Hopefully it's given you some tools, some things to think about to make sure that Whatever your goals are, whether it's you've got a degenerative disc, whether you've got some minor back pain, or maybe you've got a long-standing history of some lower back issues and other joint issues. Hopefully it's given you some principles, regardless of what the condition is or isn't, to move forwards now, whether it's the start of the new year or some other time, and get results for the long term. For some of us, we've got a longer path ahead than others with pain. For others of us, so we're just looking to get back in shape. In the grand scheme of things, whilst you are in pain, if you do have an injury, it will amount to a very short period in that long-term journey because ultimately getting into a routine of exercise on a regular basis, as we said, three to five times a week, is something we should all be doing for the long term. It offsets the mundane tasks that we must do on a daily basis to live and exist, going to work, etc. Sure, it's great if you enjoy your job, but we must be doing something active every single week. And having a plan that works is so important. And if we stick to it for the long term, we'll have so much more enjoyment in those extracurricular activities with the people that we love and the people that we want to spend time around on a daily basis. As always, Thank you for joining us if you watched this far in this episode. Let us know in the comments what you think. If you've got any questions, any comments, any thoughts, we love to read your comments and respond to all of those. As always, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Consider giving this video a thumbs up if you did find it helpful. And remember, you can always share it with someone else. Say you know someone else is coming out of an injury or coming out of some back surgery or coming out of a period in their life and they're looking to get back in shape this video, consider sharing it with them. Hopefully it'll give them a few little tips before they embark on what is a really exciting, very positive journey ahead. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.